Hello everyone, and welcome to a video talking about camps! And because we're talking about camps, we're here at my newly formed camp. I've been using this location for a while, but I've recently given some upgrades, and I think I've got a decent grasp of what I want to do every time I set up a camp now. So I figured I'd go over in a video for anyone who's struggling a bit deciding where to put their camp, what to do with it, etc, etc. Talk about some of the big benefits that come from having a camp, and give you a bit of a tour around mine and tell you why I decided to do what I've done with it. Now, first thing to consider when placing a camp is the location. Location, location, location is a big deal. I'll show you where I am on the map. Just here, I've got my camp. I'm down in the Cranberry Bog, not too far from Watoga, and there's a fair few reasons why I decided to go here. First off is the proximity to Watoga. This is a place which has a vendor there and a vendor in the shopping plaza, so I've got two high-level vendors not too far away. I've also got just to the north, Abandoned Bog Town, which is a uh, workshop, which has a whole bunch of super mutants, including a behemoth often spawns there. I've killed a few behemoths there now. So I've got lots of high level enemies I can farm there for some caps, some ammo. Super mutants are great for farming. I've got like some interesting locations all around me, which is a good starting point. Additionally, fast travel. It is free to fast travel to your camp. You can fast travel to it from anywhere for free. That and Vault 76 are the two free places to fast travel. Vault 76 is up in this quadrant, so I decided to put my camp down in this quadrant. It means if I'm going to, for example, Forward Station Alpha, if I travel to my camp first, it makes it a lot cheaper to then fast travel there, or to just walk there because it's not too far away. If you're on a team, you might want to consider having camps in maybe one up in the bottom left, one in the top right, one in the bottom right, and then you've got Vault 76 up towards the top left-ish. So keep that in mind for saving yourself some caps when travelling around. If you can travel to your camp, which is situated in a good location, you can save yourself so much money. Now, next up is areas to farm around it. We've already spoken a bit about the mutants. I've also got some other enemies spawning over that way. What I do have here as well is a little tunnel with... Yes, hello, little rad roach. With some basic enemies and equipment that spawns. So there's a stealth boy, I've had a combat shotgun there, there's first aid coolers, there's a bed down here if I really need it. What I really like though is all the glowing fungus and... wait, glowing mushrooms, sorry. No, glowing fungus and brain fungus. Yeah, they are just mushrooms that happens to be. So I've got tons of those I can just get whenever I feel like. So I've got a whole bunch of resources down here. Down that way there's also uh, aluminum ore veins and black titanium. So I've got a good supply of that. There's a lot of stuff I can farm. And on that exact same line, where is it? Okay, somewhere around here. There we are. You see just there. Let's run over to it. There are diseased cranberries, which are great. I can just pick these up whenever I like, get myself a whole bunch of diseased cranberries, because they're just near my base. If you put them inside of the actual borders of your camp, they won't respawn, I found. However, if they're just a little bit outside, they're not too far away, you can get to them, you can grab them all. And cranberries are great, because they make XP boosting food, which is lovely. Now, you'll likely have noticed here, I have a junk extractor. When you go down on the, and look at your camp, try to look for somewhere which has places which can be used in the resources. Once you load up the resources tab, you'll see which extractors can be placed where. If you find, like I've got, a junk node, which I can't really show it off too much here because I've got my thing built on it. But if you find a junk node, that is amazing. These are by far the best resources you can gather. However, I'd advise you try and build your camp anywhere where there's just a natural resource to deposit. You see a lot of them, like the waste oil things, waste, there's nuclear material ones kicking about, lots of steel or iron ones even. Keep an eye open for them and consider them as camp locations. Now, the great thing about a junk extractor as well is you get the junk pile which you can harvest, as well as tons and tons of different junk that gets all just formed in here. You can just leave this thing running for a while, and it will just sort yourself out quite nicely. Now, on the note of resource collectors, obviously anyone could come by and just take from this, unless you lock it. You'll see here, down on the bottom left, it says F to lock. So, if I put, I can have, remove the lock, which it doesn't have. Why doesn't it have a lock? I swear I locked this. I probably forgot to lock this, so it's good I'm showing you. You can place four different types of lock. Level 0, level 1, level 2, and level 3. Level 0, anyone can lock pick on. Level 3, the person requires to have pick lock, expert pick lock, and master pick lock. So it makes it a lot harder to unlock, but as you can see on the right there, it uses a lot more resources. So you can go for a nice cheap level 0 lock, which will get someone a wanted 
uh, wanted into the wanted meter? What's it called? Just gets them the wanted status, but anyone can break into it. If you put it at level 3, very few people are going to be able to break into it, and they'll also get wanted if they do. So I'm going to make a level 3 lock there. Okay, apparently I already have the level 3 lock, because... Yeah, I think I already have the level 3 lock in there, it's just not showing it properly. You can also do the same thing with any other resource gatherers you've got, and your doors. I tend to keep my doors unlocked, because I'm not too worried about people coming inside, but anything you want to keep locked, do so. Now, additionally to the junk extractor, you'll want water purifiers. What I have here are small ones. These can be built in the dirt anywhere you go. However, you also get the water pumps, something else I'd recommend because you can get water from it, although it doesn't store it. There's also the water purifier and water purifier industrial. So these are the big ones, however, they do require water to go into, and I have no water around here. There's not a big pond or anything for me to place it in. If you find yourself running very low on purified water a lot of the time, I'd highly recommend looking for a location which has a pond near it that you can place inside of your build radius, that way you can pop down one of these, power it all up, and you're good to go. It will, see, produces 60 water per hour. It, it's great if you can do it. That's the biggest disadvantage of my camp right here, is I don't have a pond to place anything in. However, with all of that stuff placed, you're going to need to power it, because each one of these just small ones, these small water purifiers can be placed in the dirt, so even if you don't have a pond, you can put these down and they give you a little bit of water. They require a fair bit of power. Each of these is eight per piece. So I have built windmills. These produce 12 power. And as you can see there, aluminum, copper, gear, and steel. It's not too expensive. The copper and the aluminum could be a problem, but if you keep your eyes open for them, should be fine. You do also have, if I go over to generators, there's small, medium, and large generators, which are fairly basic. They do cost a fair few screws, which is a big problem. There's also fusion generators. I don't actually have plans for this. If you want to unlock plans for all of these, just head over to any of the power plants. I will try and find one on the map here. Here's one of the power plants. Head to any of these. You get the event powering up whatever the name of the power plant is. Complete that event, you get plans to build a certain generator. Do those, you unlock better generators, which can power things better. Now, the final thing I've got outside here is a piece of artillery. You unlock this by just going through quests in the game. And it's just quite a nice little thing. I can use the artillery, throw it somewhere nearby. If I'm getting attacked by something, I can use that to literally bombard people. And it's a nice defense to have. Now, speaking about defenses, consider what's going to attack you. Because if you've got a camp, it might be attacked at some point. Uh, where is it? I've got somewhere over here. I was by it not that long ago. I had some razor grain. There it is, razor grain. That got attacked by a scorch beast. Just that. It was apparently slightly too close. And to repair it, I need razor grain, but I don't have any. So I can't repair that, so now that's useless to me for the time being. Damage components need to be repaired, so keep in mind that if your place is going to be attacked, you'll need a fair few resources to fix everything. Additionally, if you place turrets down, it might defend them. If you're facing just against a basic scorch that would attack you, place down just a very simple turret, which I'll show just here. Yeah, basic turret. Perfect. You pop one of these down, we'll defend against really, really simple stuff. Anyone can make these. If you want to make better stuff, then you're going to need the home defense perk in agility. That that unlocks the better ones. You see there, home defense level 2, home defense 3. Some of them require science and various bits and bobs as well. But home defense is a key one to boosting your defenses a bit. Do consider where you're placing these. If I place this turret just over here... That's no good. There's tons of my own stuff in the way. It's not got much of a line of sight or of anything. It's kind of ineffective. If I place my turret, say, do, 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 up here, all of a sudden, it's got a whole view over that way. It covers the, um, the south side, as it turns out, of my house, and gives a good bit of range. Try to place your turret somewhere up high and where they've got a good line of sight. Think about where you'd want to be if you were sniping enemies and place your turret somewhere near to that location. Now, let's head inside to see what I've done here. Uh, another very quick note as well is power connectors. Pop them on your house, they power up the stuff inside that's attached to the walls. Make sure you do have everything actually connected. If everything's interconnected, it's all going to be powered up. Now, we head inside my door, and 
inside here, I've got two levels, and I've got all of the crafting stations. You see there, I've got weapons, armor, ammo, chemistry, food, and upstairs, the power armor. You ideally want to have all of these, that way you have all of the crafting stations available to you whenever you go to your base. I also have several stash boxes. I just like having lots of these, so they're convenient to me, I'm not constantly heading to the same one, and it makes the place look a little bit more busy, because it's very empty, as you can see from here. But have all of these, all of the crafting stations perfect. Additionally, you'll ideally want some instruments and a bed. The instruments will get you the well-tuned bonus, I'll show you just here, well-tuned, which is AP regen, and well-rested from sleeping in a bed, grants you bonus experience. Get both of these, well worth having. If you've got the plans for them, they're cheap to build as well. Now, as for building your actual house, there's not a lot of recommendations I can really give, as it is down to your own personal preferences. I've got here a very nice little steel one. I would recommend putting windows so you can just... Look, I can see outside now. It means it's a lot easier to tell what's going on. You don't have to leave the safety of your house. For example, before recording this, I saw... Well, you can't see it now because it's helpfully going all foggy. But I saw over in the distance there was a Scorch Beast. So I waited around in the while in the house before recording this guide. Because I didn't want a Scorch Beast to attack halfway through. Now, that's it for the basic ones. I want to go quickly over a few other perks that you might want to get. Because you saw in the back there, I had my garden with a razor grain in it. My garden's very incomplete at the moment. You can build a lot more stuff. I will show you just here. There's, yeah, uh, blackberries, carrots, corn, pumpkins, melons, mutt fruit or mute fruit, razor grain, and tato plants. Can all be built, providing you have a little bit of fertilizer and the plant in question. After you've built them, if you then have the green thumb perk, you can harvest them just by going over and hitting E and get twice the number back. So farming can really be beneficial, especially if you want tons and tons of soups, or even just for selling. They're nice basic stuff to sell. If you're constantly finding that you can't sell enough stuff to vendors, make yourself a farm, things go a lot easier. When you are building, a perk you will definitely want, which I'm going to show you, I'm going to properly show you this one instead of just putting it up on the screen, is Contractor. Crafting workshop items now costs either 25% or 50%. I've upgraded this to rank 2 because spending half as much on building everything is great. Earlier on, I did a whole bunch of like improvements to this place, I just tweaked things around. I forgot to put on Contractor, and I ran out of steel because of that. You can really eat through just basic things like concrete, steel, and wood. They can just be ate through if you're not careful when you're building your actual base. So keep that in mind. It's a great one for if you plan on doing just any camp building. If you plan on building a camp, get the contractor perk. It is so worthwhile. Additionally, if you do find yourself running low on wood or steel or anything like that, go out, scavenge for resources. Two perks I'd recommend grabbing are... um. Woodchucker, if you really need wood, that's in the luck tree, gets you double the wood from if you go over to an actual tree and harvest it. I don't know if there's any around here because I'm never really short on wood. There's Woodchucker and a Scrapper in the Intelligence perk tree. Isn't that great, It doesn't. it's not as good as it was in Fallout 4, but it means any weapons and armor you scrap down will give you slightly more resources from it. And that's pretty much it for this guide, so just some nice basic tips for you all, stuff to kind of get you thinking about what you're doing with your camp. Place it in somewhere that's got interesting locations nearby. Think about it in terms of fast travel. If you're on your own, it's going to be different than if you're in, if you're on a team. If you're on a team, place your camps in various locations. If you're on your own, think about where you're traveling to the most and where you need to get to cheaply. Make sure you're placing it not too close to the enemy. For example, I mentioned the workshop over that way, which has a behemoth in. I don't want to build my camp right next to the behemoth spawn. That's that's a bad move. That would result in my camp being destroyed all the time. Instead, I build it where there's Scorch Beasts over that way, behemoths and mutants over that way, but nothing dangerous directly around me. The closest thing is sometimes on the road, which you can barely see, because thanks, foggy weather. There's occasionally Myalurks, but they don't roam to here. It's very rare I got attacked. In fact, that um, razor grain that destro got destroyed is the first time anything's been attacked. So, think about where you're going to place it. You do need to spend a bit of time in your camp to really work out what's going on all around you, but have a good explore before you put down your camp, spend all of those caps, and then realise it's a bad location. Now, I hope all of these tips were helpful. 
bit of a longish guide, but I wanted to talk over a lot of the camp basics for anyone who's struggling with it a bit and doesn't know where to start. Do comment below if you have any questions on the camp, if I can answer them I will, if not, someone else watching this video might have the answer for you. If you found the video helpful, do hit the like button, and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. I mostly do builds, I do a few guides as well, and lots of challenge videos and challenge runs. As always, thank you very much for watching. Sarge out.